Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here in Cosmic Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. Well, we got to talk about two things here in uh, playing as Canada. Or really, the United Kingdom in Canada. Iceland leaves Middle Europa. The people of Iceland have elected to leave Middle Europa in sphere and attempt to forge a new web of independent trade. This could be an opportunity for us to find an ally closer to the home isles. Interesting, and the Yankee Rebellion is finally over. Look at that. It's taken many months, but it appears that the so-called Yankee Rebellion in New England is over. Resistance leaders have either been captured or fled, and the remaining local governments all seem to be on board with the Canadian government, spurred on, one imagines, by the pictures of devastation throughout the rest of America playing across the newspaper pages. We should see no further trouble in the area. Finally, to get a little bit more stability, quite a bit more political power, and we get all cores. Holy crap, that more than doubled our current manpower, and our industry should be a little bit decent, right? 77, it's not bad. Now we have got quite a few civvies, but we're going to need quite a few millies, and having these as cores, I guess we got a little more steel. A lot more steel, actually. Other than that, I mean, it's great and all, but still not enough for us. We're still building up a lot of the stuff here, and then uh, we're just ready to go to war still. Let's take a look at India real quick, and where are we at? Hey, look at that. We have an encirclement. Hopefully we can defeat these two other divisions, because it doesn't look like they're doing so well in India anymore. A couple comments include, can we have national populace South Rhodesia with Ian Douglas Smith in charge next? Uh, we'll see. Maybe, probably not, just because uh, now pops are very somewhat close to, uh, pretty close to um, paternal autocrats, but eventually, you know, keep pestering me about it, and I will get to it eventually. I can't promise anything, but that's usually how I work. You gotta pester me about things, and eventually I'll get things done. Uh, do we have a yet? No, turnout sucks. Um, dreadnought, that's nice and all, but improved lightship holes. These aren't great, but it's what we've got. I don't like using destroyers, honestly. I much prefer light cruisers. Because the stories go down very fast. But that's what we got, like I said. We need more steel. We need a lot more steel. So, remove that. Cruiser subs. Improved light ships. Improved subs. Not really going to use that. Heavy hull. Nah. Dreadnoughts. I like dreadnoughts, but they're just so slow. So, we're doing quite quite well. Um, what else we got, got over here? Oh. Reinforced Halifax, the Maple Line, the Georgian Line. Oh my god. Anchored to Lake um, Plain in the west and the Atlantic Ocean in the east, a fortified line along the New England border could prove decisive and block an invasion from the east and shut down the last obvious link near capital. Wow! Georgian Line is an incredibly ambitious plan to fortify the entire length of the 49th parallel, hopefully preventing hostile forces from bisecting the nation and circling the heartland. Those will prove to be challenges that infrastructure is lacking, but will certainly lock down any attack from the west. <clears throat> St. Lawrence Line. St. Lawrence River runs through the heart of the nation and presents a logistical last line of defense against American invasions. We should fortify it heavily so that the nation is not skewered in the Quebec Basin seized by American bandits and the Great Lakes. They, pro uh, pro they provide a natural barrier between Ontario and the USA. All we need to do is fortify a few choke points, like Windsor or Niagara, to create an effective redoubt. As such, this should pro prove to be a simple fortification project to prevent a devastating flank in the case of an attack. So, we could. Don't feel like it. American Civil War is over, and the combined syndicates of America is less than 20% surrender progress, and controls at least 25 states. So I'll we'll keep monitoring all this down here. Um, maybe we can invest in ourselves. Current IED, IEDC. You know what? We haven't done South Africa yet. We're going to do South Africa then. Propaganda, solidify control. That honestly wouldn't be too bad. I don't mind getting more paternal autocracy support. It gives more political power as well. But we are at war. Partial mobilization would be very good to do, but I still want more army XP. And naval XP. And air XP. So all this would be very good to get. But at the same time... Partial mob is 1938. So that's looking better. Because um, we are going to go to war no matter what in the end. Uh, radar is not good enough yet. Ooh, close out of this one. And I do want to see what we got over here. Because I do want to increase our exile support. Appoint exiles to high ranking positions. Influence of the British exiles will increase. We increase the influence of the exiles within Canadian society. <clears throat> we should appoint prominent exiles to high ranking positions within the Canadian government and work to favor exiles over Canadian candidates. Canadian resistance kind of sucks, but whatever. So where are we at with this? Moderate. Appoint Canadians. Nope. British cultural achievements. Our British cultural ties have greatly aided in helping the Canadians grow accustomed to the exiles and the exile government to further strengthen the power of the exiles. We will we'll promote British cultural achievements and make all Canadians truly grateful to live in a society shaped by the British. We'll do that one next, probably, if I remember. But what we'll do next, actually, is do Chief of the Staff. No, we're going to do military high command. Ooh. 
Supposed to be nice. Ooh, fuel efficiency. Army fuel consumption goes down. Sorority efficiency. Naval repair. Ooh. It's only 5%, though. Naval defense is not bad. Shoots on first contact wouldn't be bad either. Daredevils. Oh, this is different things I've not seen before. Maybe you guys have seen them, but I definitely have not. Electronics manufacturer. Army. Yeah. If anything, attrition is okay. Speed is decent. Breakthrough is nice. Max attrition. We'll probably go with uh, breakthrough. Oh, another Marine Division. Look at that. So where are we at now? After doing all that stuff, we still need to continue breaking through enemy lines. Not sure where the divisions are at, but... Oh, oh, the CSA was not at War with American Unity. No wonder they're doing so... Okay. Should be more than fine. They're only militia, for the love of God. Getting rid of another infantry division. Enemy infantry division is... Very important. And we do have planes on here, too, which is very nice. add to them. Someone else says from a comment, we love your content. And I say thank you to that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, power. I'll see that later. Any political decisions? Nice. Very good. Honestly, I'm not sure where their divisions went, so... I need one of you to stay here. That'd be great. I need one of you to stay here, too. Hey! Oh, that's another encirclement. Look at that. Nice. There you go. Just help beat them up. Uh, gotta wait for more organization for you guys. 1938, like I said, work on more guns. Because we love guns. At least on the channel, we love guns. Chief of the RCM. A heated discussion has occurred within the Canadian government regarding who to formally appoint as head of the RCM. <clears throat> Until now. The British exile, fleet in exile has operated more or less independently of the Canadian chain of command, but everyone agrees this cannot continue. The British exiles are adamant on putting Sir Roger Backhouse on the fleet, since they see it as their fleet. <coughs> Ministers suggest Canadian Admiral Percy Nellis is more of the man for the job and will do a better job of coordinating the two forces. Nellis should have the job, versus Sir Backhouse will look after the British fleet. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not bad. Screen attack was okay. Sir Backhouse will look... After the British fleet. Hmm. Capital ship, yeah. Empower these guys. That'll be good. I read this last time, so if you read this again, please go ahead. The Mounties. I want you to hold. There you go. Hello? There you go. Do what you must. Oh, that naval XP. So our navy is decent, it's not great. We do have 89 ships here, and a carrier group, which we need planes for that, too. Um, we got a lot of capital ships. Now, the Valkyrie Guerra ships are not fantastic. We got a lot of battleships, so we're going to go probably with... Ooh, yeah, I'll probably go with Fleet and Being. Just because I like, I like big ships. Big ships are fun. <clears throat> Honestly, y'all can just stop and just like hang out. Actually, go here. Greeks asked for the, to join the Entente. The Greeks have sent us formal requests to be admitted into the Entente. Are they worthy of the, poss of the possibility we might get dragged into their struggles? Of course. Hey, popularity of the monarchy rises. As King Albert completed a visit to the British military base this week, and while some have complained that it was a clear publicity stunt, the pictures of the king shaking hands with excited, grateful soldiers has done wonders for the king's reputation. He really seems to care about us, one soldier remarked on saying. It makes me so proud to find his name. Wonderful. Fantastic. It was already high. But now it's better. Oh, it was, oh, was low, actually. My bad. Invite them in. That would be fantastic. Solidify control. I really want to solidify control, because we're here already. <clears throat> Military high command. These are all actually pretty darn good. This one's very good. Speed, recovery rate, and defense. I like that. Naval resilience seems really good. Fleet coordination, spotting speed, and number of ships in first contact. I usually I do an army one here, because they're pretty good overall. Um, I usually do, like, artillery or something. But I might actually go with a naval one. Resilience, comms. Recover faster, barely. Well, you get point, point plus point zero. Speed, defense versus this one. Um, so easy to get naval stuff, though. I like this one, but it's not super as important. Mm, I want more paternal autocracy, but we're going to go with that one. Paternal autocracy will come next. Hey, 
They, they wanted to join us. Fantastic. Okay, well, I'm not sure, like I said, not sure where your divisions went, but not our problem. <clears throat> the Marines are pretty decent here. What are you, level 4 still? Commando? Well, that seems alright. You just beat the crap out of them. Three divisions there, now they're two. Complaints over labor camp conditions. The economic relief camp set up by the government have been the source of considerable criticism as of late, merely due to the low pay rate of pay received by the workers as well as their living conditions. The unemployed men working in the camp so they cannot earn enough, not enough, earn enough money to return to their former lives and get regular jobs, force them to remain in the camps indefinitely. Anger has been rising. There's a demand for the government to do something about it. Time to shut down the camps. Improve camp conditions. Men should be grateful they have work at all. Won't we'll improve conditions. That's fine. Bracket shooting, nice. Having five research slots is going to be so nice, but we got to make sure where our navy is tip-top shape, um, just because the other navy, the good old uh, Union Britain navy, is going to be very strong, very, 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 very strong. And so we obviously have no fuel, but the king's unhealthy habit. A lifelong tobacco enjoyer, <clears throat> King Albert, has smoked since he was a boy. Ah. Whether it be an occasional cigar, or during high-class meetings, or political talks, or his more regular habit of smoking, uh, multiple packs of cigarettes a day, it's an understatement to say the king enjoys his smoke. Even having deals with the Imperial Tobacco Company of Canada and the subsequent brands like Dumour, John Player, Paul Mall, Mar Marlboro, and the new Viceroy. And though this is added to his charismatic and suave appearance, it has secretly begun to take a serious toll on the king's health. Recently being diagnosed with the early stages of lung cancer, King Albert must now make a choice, give up his beloved habit and pursue experimental treatment for his illness before working wreak havoc on his body, or simply ignore the issue and hope it goes away on its own. Albert quits cold turkey and is secretly admitted for cancer treatments? Not even King Cancer can stop the king from doing as he pleases. Oh! Whoa! The fall of Chicago! Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, the American Union State's actually doing well! What? What the heck? That's actually fantastic. We're going to need more divisions here, though. We're going to have a big old fight against Kiwi Long eventually. I promise you that. If, if if he actually does win, that's the first time I've actually seen the American Union State AI by itself win. I'm very surprised that the syndicates are not doing as well as they are. Because usually they're very, very strong. And I usually, I always complain about them. So I apologize for complaining about them. But I, I promise I'll complain about them even further on in the future, too. Mm. What do we got here? Marines are doing great. As they should. Good. Anti syndicalist decree, that'd be nice, but we don't have to have that. Decryption and encryption would be very good. But we still have other stuff that we gotta do here. Construction speed, found this. It's not bad. Bell Company. Airlines. We need planes. State of the British fleet. Uh, slightly better production. Naval ship gain daily, that's good. <clears throat> Let's reach across the Atlantic. Well, let's hope that one of our loyal subjects uh, of the crown would one day rise to tear down the syndicalist base or beast. Fate has proven much conclusions to be forlorn. With reality bearing its ugly teeth, we must realize the truth we have practically sat idly by for the next for nearly 20 years, but doing nothing but waiting for a moment to push off from Canada's frigid shores. However, our moment is coming soon. The Red Menace is actively harming our home, and the Axis are eager to reclaim the birthright. It's high time to start preparations for the greatest military and civilian return in the his history of humanity, be it by force, treaties, or secret operations. Come on, guy, don't get wounded. Socialist Republic of Argentina. Well, that does not seem ideal. Tanks are not good. Heart and soul, new entertainment sector. Uh, seems to be emerging within Canada. Martial arts wrestling, which seems to have been pioneered by a Canadian. Stuart Edward Stu Hart, born on May 3rd, 1915, is a Canadian amateur wrestler who has helped establish a strong wrestling scene in Canada. Hart was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and grew up in a large family of 12 children. He began wrestling in high school and became a successful amateur wrestler, winning several championships. Although being drafted into the Royal Canadian Navy prevented him from starting his professional career, he's been appointed director of athletics within the Navy. We'll continue as an athletic director rather than an enlisted seaman for the time being, since he wrestles mainly for enjoyment of the other servicemen. Film reel footage of him wrestling has significantly boosted his popularity across the nation. This in addition to the thousands of other enlisted men in drill halls who watch him wrestle. For the most part, Hart has performed and organized different sports events to fun raise funds for Canada's struggle, both present and future. According to reports, he intends to open a wrestling school after completing his military service. 
Hard is committed to this country in wrestling. He hopes to get new, use his newfound cel celebrity status to bring attention to Canada's needs. He also determined to inspire others to pursue their dreams. Not only a loyal Canadian, but an excellent athlete. Great. Force defense. Oh, it's going to be a grind here. Especially fighting in the mountains. Well, I honestly... Let's wait real quick. Oh, Dominion Day. You're going to buy this, please. Good. Darn it. They actually broke free. A good day for us all. You need to entrap them, encircle them, and destroy them from without. Hey, more factories. Nice. So we're actually working on this, which is great. Naval bombers are good. Any more planes? Planes, planes. So what are you doing next year? Military factories are good. I still want a synthetic refinery, though. We're definitely going to need that. But in Massachusetts. My god, the American Union State is doing so well. It's actually awesome to see. Oh, uh, do you want to come in the war? There you go. Oh, we're from the Luso English Treaty. It's now it's time to fully reactivate the Anglo Portuguese Alliance, which is sending an offer to join the Entente with the Portuguese on her side. The international will shall tremble. Approach your oldest ally. The Anglo Portuguese Alliance is deep and old, and thus have been advocating that we begin the process of restoring it by proven relations with the Portuguese. Oh, nice. Sabotage against the Union of Britain's naval forces. You know, so how many naval forces we have completed compared to the Union of Britain? Demand Danish Atlantic possessions. Hold full, common goal. Return to the North Star. Guardian of the Canal, ruler of two oceans. Huh. Return of British Honduras. Third protector of Mystico. Integration of the West Indies Federal Project. Falklands are coming home. Operations for war. So we can't do anything over there, which is fine with us. Fine with me, really. Um, naval bomber program. New naval officers. Focus on the RCN. Gander. Air experience gain. Focus on RAF. RCAF. Ship propulsion. Chalk River Labs. Oil. We need oil. CN Rail Expansion. Rail networks are the arteries of the nation of Canada, and none more so than the state-run Canadian National Railway. Expanding this network can only strengthen the nation, and it will surely prove crucial should we need to reform wartime supply and troop transports across the nation. Get here first, and... The death of King Albert. Oh no! Ignoring the pleading of his family, friends, and doctors, King Albert continued to smoke despite the cancer that began to ravage his lungs, and in the months that followed, the disease took its heavy toll. Late last night at Riddow Hall, smoking his final cigarette, alone out on his balcony, King Albert succumbed to his death... His Cancer in a funny, bloodle, final, bloody, and desperate coughing fit that had him falling to his knees, unable to breathe, before tragically suffocating and passing away before his family or guards could come to his aid. In an honorable but somber funeral already planned and underway, Albert is soon to be laid to rest. And now his oldest child and heir, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, is prepared to be crowned as Queen Elizabeth II in the coming coronation. As the nation mourns uh, for the short reign of King Albert, so tragically cut short by the cruel mistress of fate. By the cruel mistress of fate. Um, and perhaps by foolhardy ignorance of health standards or foolish stubbornness in the face of clear medical danger, we also now prepare for rule under the first female monarch since the reign of beloved Queen Victoria. Let us hope she can live up to such lofty legacies and expectations. Long live Queen Elizabeth II. Hey, Elizabeth II, look at that. The Queen. House of Windsor is back in power. How about? Oh, God. <clears throat> What are you doing? Oh god. This shouldn't be a problem. Marines, that'd be nice. That should be really good to do. But I still want to do land doctrine as well. And honestly, we'll probably just go superior firepower. Spartan general, oh god. <coughs> Excuse me. Among all the axioms we have at both the Crown and Canada's disposal, the most unique of them is Field Marshal Bernard Law Montgomery, referred to as Monty among his troops. Born in Surrey in 1887, Montgomery spent his early years in Ulster, British Tasmania, and then returned to London to attend the Royal Military College at Sandhurst. After graduating in 1908, he joined the Royal Warwickshire 
Regiment as commissioned officer. Not too long after, the Valkyrie began, and Montgomery nearly died from a well-placed German shot to the right lung during the First Battle of Ypres. Although the grave was prepared for his expected death, Montgomery recovered fully and served as a staff officer for the rest of the conflict. It was here that he noted and criticized the wasteful tactics of the good fighting generals such as Sir Douglas Haig, who had reduced the lives of the soldiers to mere cannon fodder. He was appalled at the lack of leadership, seeing no senior commander ever step on the front line to establish a sense of understanding between them and the soldiers they sent forth to die. After the end of the war with a peace with honor, Montgomery luckily managed to be accepted into the Staff College at, uh, at Camberley. This ensured his only hope of a high command position. He graduated in 1921 and participated in the final stage of the Irish War of Independence. However, with the crumbling economy and instability of the government, Montgomery soon witnessed the culmination of events that resulted in the spectacular disintegration of the British Empire. It was in Surrey at Camberley Staff College when the first sparks of the revolution occurred with the Port Talbot riots. As the situation quickly deteriorated, he was posted to the Territorial Army as a major and went to the front lines in Wales. Montgomery became an excellent leader and strategist of the British forces. As a result of his efforts, the British Army had limited success during the Civil War. He was later promoted to the rank of general to continue and to coordinate the remaining Royalist forces in the British Isles. However, as Scotland and Wales fell to the Socialist forces, Montgomery's forces were confined to the West and East Midlands. They were soon sent into a, for retreat, a force retreat south towards London after Nottingham's fall and anxiously were prepared for the final blow. With limited amounts of material, constant bombardment, and increased desertions in London and chaos, Montgomery was evacuated through Brighton weeks before London's inevitable fall. Socialist forces controlled England, with only pockets of resistance in a few isolated areas. The remnants, remnants of the British army were scattered and disorganized, with no hope of regrouping and fighting back. The war was lost, but Montgomery successfully fled to Canada. Over the next decade, Montgomery would play a key role in the reorganization of Canada's forces and eventually return to England. Montgomery's leadership and tactical skills helped transform Canada's troops into semi-professional troops, although manpower was a concern. By 1936, Montgomery was now a field marshal, steadily building up Canada's forces and maintaining control over the remaining seas, overseas dominions, such as India, with military assistance throughout the past decade. Regardless of the cost, he remains committed to fighting the socialist menace across the Atlantic. Three cheers for Mahdi. Great. Yep, now it's fine. Beautiful. We're going to finally finish these guys off. Ah. Very high, very high, very nice, very nice. IADC, 50% power there, propaganda efforts are fine. Certified control would be nice, but got some loose guns. It's fine. 42. Logistics, signals. I guess we grab this one too, why not? Transmitter plunges into chaos. Oh no. What a problem. So Greece has got to hold out on its own. That's fine, yeah, come on in. That's not good. Once we're done with any old center guys over there too. Should be able to take Hyderabad. Wait, so let's just take power as they're in the middle of a war. Greece, please don't lose it. The refugees fled in northern Ontario. The situation in America worsening is no surprise the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Canada has become the top destination for those fleeing the violence. Many uh, of the immigrants are illegal, but an increasingly large number are not. Oh, God. Already there are several refugee camps in northern Ontario. Um, uh, coming from Michigan, of course, and their numbers are putting strain on our supplies. Observers com comment that the situation is likely to get worse before it gets any better. Again, typical. Nice. CP rail expansion. There's only a promise the, of a transcontinental rail network that brought the western provinces into the Dominion. Maintaining expanding this network will ensure our continued control over the region and will serve us should we ever require a large scale fleet threat between both seas. Of course. Fine, call and call everybody in, I guess. Bell Crown Corporations and Sherbrooke, yes. And Halifax, yes, please. There you go. King of India. No, I prefer these guys. You know what? If anything, I'll take their navy, which isn't very good. Darn it, we can't take that. Don't worry, British guys, you died for four ships. Hey, at least you are heavy cruisers, that's nice. I'm gonna spit you guys off, and we're gonna go here. An end to the rum rations, as we have seen it up to reform and build up the Royal Navy. Most questions usually refer to doctrine or equipment. However, one of the largest questions and what may, many see as a problem is the behavior of the actual sailors in the Navy. 
Often you see others known far and wide for their wildness when on shore leave. The oh boy. Well, has caused many causes, one of the largest many reformers' fears of the rum ration. Issued daily since 1850, the rum ration is an eighth of a pint of 95.5 proof rum. Wow. While the amount of rum given can vary from ship to ship, reformers fear that this freely flowing booze helps sailors develop a stomach for alcohol, but can them drink even more when on shore leave, causing the mayhem which sailors are known for. Due to this, many reformers within the government are pressing for the Navy to end the rum ration, thus hopefully improving their popular image of sailors, thus opening the Royal Navy up for more recruits, or so the theory goes. Beyond this, they say that having sober sailors will make ships much safer. Officers and sailors who have got caught wind of this plan are condemned outright, seeing that this ration greatly ups morale and have little to no effect on the behaviors of men who have been at sea for months. Or months. Instead, they say that if anything should be done, the rum ration should be increased, although simply wishing for it to be left as is. In any case, with such an issue pressing at government's doorstep, it simply cannot be overlooked, especially when it could be potentially help in the fight against Cindy's. Do away with it. Black Talk Day. Increase the rum ration as the morale is needed as high as possible. Do away with it. Mm. We're, always, we're already getting our way anyway, so... I need you all to arrive in Athens and see what we're going to do about this next. We need some more planes, too. Finest hour, if you're about that, please go ahead. What a childish fantasy. Hey, very high influence of the British. Direct the exiles, yes. That'd be fun. So now with this, because we have their popularity so high, they can assist the British government. So. Are we going to increase Queen Elizabeth's popularity? It's moderate. Industry. North map factory will be built. There's only one more factory. I'd rather get the political power and stability. That would help out a lot. Honestly, I wish we could increase party popularity. That'd be kind of nice as well. So now we're making a little more still. Which is good. Pretty good. Or sport. Um, IEDC. Did anyone else invest? No. Propaganda efforts? No. Royal visit? Mm. Stability is pretty bad down here. I don't want to spend political power on them, though. Truth be told, I really don't. American Civil War. How, how is American Civil War going? We've ignored it. Uh, they just kind of stalled out. The Western Command Center is still alive for some reason. Mine's worst day. Black Top Day, much to the status of sailors of the Royal Navy across the Empire. The Rome Ration, a tradition dating back to 1655, has officially been issued for the last time. Sailors have acted on different ways as a result of this loss of the Rome Ration. Most, but certainly not all, express their dissatisfaction by wearing black armbands or burying their tots at sea, throwing their empty glasses overboard. In one case, a can training camp in Canada held a mock funeral with a coffin filled to the brim with empty glasses, preceded by pipers and drummers. In any case, for the final time around the Empire, glasses were raised some in toast to the King, others to Davy Jones, reformers. Pleased with the results, expect that the ending of the ration not only will, satis will uh, increase safety aboard Royal Navy ships uh, greatly, but the overall image of the Navy will improve as well, and no longer will be drunken sailors cause chaos and shore leave. In any case, the Roman ration is no more for better or for worse. What shall we do with a sober sailor? Now your planes are here doing damage and increasing our... XP. Central American conflicts we will not bother with. Gosh. I still like to solidify control. Alright, guys are here. Fantastic. Good. Invest in natural resources. Much of the nation's wealth lies in untapped natural resources. While prospecting and exploring all these deposits hidden in Canada's waste and wilderness will take time, we can take advantage of this natural bounty to ensure our strength and independence. Queen recovery rate stability. Popular figurehead. Nice. All right. So what else we got here? All sorts of stuff there. Brown. Build Crown Corporations in Calgary. Yes. Three months to do all that stuff. That's fine. Nice. Good, kill each other. Very good. How are we doing with fuel? Looking a little better overall. The Great New England Hurricane of 1938. If you wonder about that one, please go ahead. I don't want to feel like reading that, so. God save us all. Sucks. Oh, is there not enough, like, uh, supply here, maybe? I'll send one Marine in first. It's like in Royal Canadian Marines. Get to Cairo Railway. Very nice. Good job. My source state is gone, huh? Kingdom of India. German Empire's down there, too. 
on the military. Yeah, we're all right. Well, how much is Bulgaria lost? Some. Kind of spastastic, kind of, too. Oh, hello. Oh, that's very good, actually. Luck and luck. You're the man for the job. Prairie oil prospects. There's been small scale drilling in the prairie provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan for some time, but perhaps there's more of this critical resource waiting for us. Or for those who bother to look, perhaps we might even be sitting on the fields of oil that would rival those of the United States. And then after this, we're going to start investing in more military stuff. I'm just kidding, yeah. That'd be good. What do we got next? Arms factories, new munitions plants, develop aluminum would be nice. Ah, develop Alberta oil. We have discovered oil in the prairies, and it will take some time and effort to create a productive oil well there. We do have Alaska as well. So. It's funny he's watching this. Nicaragua is gone. Oh, you're all there now. Well, I mean, if they want to keep attacking him, mean, I'm okay with that. Not really becoming an organizer, infantry leader, engineer, mountaineer, ranger, debater. Well, actually, becoming an organizer. I mean, if they want to keep going, I'm okay with that. We've lost 67 guys so far. and helped our air out just a tiny bit, so. Still 1938. The refugee crisis. Um, the number of illegal refugees coming across from the border from America has become a national crisis, impacting the UK of Great Britain and Canada's stability and supply capabilities. Not to mention the amount of soldiers required to keep the peace. As the current rate of arrivals continue, things are sure to get worse. Parliament is arguing that the government should figure out the way to do quickly. Oh, crap. Well, the home of the new home of the free. Well, an odd turn of events is a Canada who now leads North America as the home of the free. Refugees flock to us for safety and support, although in such numbers that they have threatened to overwhelm us. We must figure out what to do about this pressing issue quickly. But we can just fight against them now. I w I'm tired of wait, just waiting. I want to. I want to start going into America. So you guys should be ready to go whenever. You guys are just here to hang out too. Good. Thirty-eight, almost thirty-seven. Thirty-nine, almost thirty-nine. Heavy MGs. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and start working on this instead. There you go. We got your search bonus. Sure. Ah, develop coal in southern Ontario. Discovered coal deposits in the northern part of Ontario. Take some time and have to create a productive mine there as well as Saskatchewan oil. Fuel refining, good. Even more fuel. Fuel for the war effort. 39. I'll get more up, but what are we lacking on? Anything? No. Actually, decent. Doing decently. Good our ships over here, too. So, you have no planes up here, which is a big old mistake. Carriers and naval bombers. And we'll look fighters and cast for you. Panama will require investments. Panamanian diplomats have come to us requesting investments, claiming that after a short period in the red, we'll really profit from them. Sounds like a scam. Probably is a scam, but whatever. So it's looking all right. I need more dockyards too. It's looking a little better for us. Not great, but still a little better. What we got here? Oh, armored trains. Uh, sh sure. Ball of Detroit. Hey, good. Very nice. Good soon revolt, very nice. Oh, 
Once we strike from the north, they will have nothing to do against us. Uh, Serapis exists. Well, wow. actually, since you're here, there you go. You're a bunch of naval bombers. You come to the coast. And now we're going to need a greatly more planes. Refugees flood in southern Ontario. Again. Second Russo. Oh, wow. Billy Bishop dies in an accident. Canadian fighter and hero, Billy Bishop, was killed in an accident today when his plane collided with another plane on, over an airfield in uh, Regina. He'll be truly missed. Oh, that sucks. Bro. Violence has been a common place at refugee camps, mainly due to conflicts between the refugees themselves as well as the guards, but also due to poor conditions. The St. Catherine camp is one of the most densely populated in the province, and conditions have been apparently gone so bad that even a full-scale riot for the refugees broke out. They overwhelmed the guards, spilling out of the camp and heading into the outer Toronto area, where they eventually were stopped by Ontario provincial police. Fear that the only first incident on the scale we're likely to see. So it needs to stop. Tear up the hate, there be treaty. The hate, uh, Herbert Treaty. Signed less than four decades ago, put an end to a dispute with Americans over the Alaska British Columbia border. Despite being more than willing to respect this agreement until the end of days, the United States failed to do so on the count of their dis united unity disintegrate. Having come into ownership of Alaska, we can simply nullify the treaty and withdraw the borders to reward British Columbia with their claims to Juneau and form a new legal entity from the remains of the former state. The new home of the free. Parliament has been engulfed in an argument over what to do regarding the American refugees. Doing nothing is not an option. But many MPs are saying that a massive release effort is needed to improve the conditions in the camps. The, ex the expense to say is justified because Americans are our brothers and sisters and we must care for them in our hour of need. In a similar vein, St. Louis St. Laurent has proposed what he calls Project Samaritan, an even broader relief effort spreading out the camps and refu housing refugees with average Canadians there. The most able would be put to work alongside factory workers and laborers a far better life than doing nothing inside a camp. The Conservatives, meanwhile, say that the security risk is too great. They propose that the security force be bolstered from the ranks of soldier recruits and that the border would be closed at once. So security needs are paramount, close the border. Ooh, that'd be nice. We need to help the refugees within reason. I would enact Project Samaritan once. This seems like a bad idea. Daily political power cost. I want to see about that one. That's going to kill us, though. Oh, God. No, no one can get the effects of investing. Darn it. Ba a lot of basic light tanks. We're not really using tanks, but lower by one, probably for now. Nice. Recompense for the Klondike losses. During the Klondike Gold Rush, many American prospectors came to exploit our land, indeed. It's true that they had to pay customs and stakes fees while giving a 20% of all wealth they found to our government. Much wealth was still lost over their hands. Our new territory in Alaska is rich in hidden treasures of the earth and sea. This is waiting to be discovered as a repayment of the debt the American miners have accrued. No reds on our border. Absolutely no reds. Sure, we can send you to the gallows as well, I suppose. Of course, their divisions are really probably mightily thick. Yeah, they're very thick divisions. Blood on the streets of Shanghai. The authority of the legation, legation mandate councils collapsed in a single night of blood and violence. Street gangs organized by Chinese criminals organizations have slaughtered many members of the police corps, administrators, and even a handful of the more influential delegates for the legation force powers. Uh, unfortunately, since the dividends we are entitled to have not been paid anyway, this is a little effect on us. That's too bad. Seriously, bro. Alright, that's the case. We're not winning because their divisions are just gigantic, probably. I'm going motorize this time, huh? Interesting. Of course, it doesn't help their divisions aren't super great, either. Armor battalions, combat support. Yeah. It's fine. There you go. Why don't you stop? Reorganize yourselves. Right here. Yes. New England recruitment. Oh, look at that. 
With the England firmly under control, the time is coming to begin a campaign of recruitment among American citizens. There are enough who support us and with the military experience that we could uh, assemble a large force of locals within the span of a few months. Develop my main iron deposits. Develop Boston oil refineries. Establish the province of Alaska. While land as far as north would typically be administered to Confederation as a territory, Alaska's current premier, Ernest Gruning, has refused the prospect of admitting Alaska as a territory, saying the territories have no inherent sovereignty. Gruning has accused the Canadian government of treating Alaska no differently than their American predecessors. To avoid proving them right, Canada will admit Alaska's are 12th province instead of Canada's third territory. Here, you guys can just kind of hang out here. Just train. It's fine. Direct the exiles. Yeah, they got to work with the British government. We need more that political power now. Now we're throwing artillery on these guys. It should be better. Recompense for contact losses. Um. Hmm. Preparation for war, yeah. We've waited more than a decade for a second chance of taking on the syndicalist traders. The time's come to seriously consider what we need to do, what we need to sacrifice in order to achieve that goal. Oh, look at that. They're still attacking here. Bunch of crazies. Hey, look at that. Whoa. Woodsworth loses CCF leadership vote. <clears throat> J.S. Woodsworth was at the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation since the founding in 1932, lost his leadership over the party, due in large part said to an increasingly unpopular opposition to the war against the syndicalists. He has been replaced by younger James Caldwell, who has promised to reinvigorate the party and restore to prominence. We shall see about that. God dang it. Not ideal. That's going to cost us pretty dearly to make these guys huge, but it is what it is. Can we actually make him 40 combo with yet? Ah, now our allies are going to give us a lot of goods then. Let's see. Yeah, everyone wants to give us good. Look at that. They'll pay for us. Philadelphia's the capital, huh? Go to Philly, 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 Philly. Philly. That gives us some army XP, some air XP. Not really naval XP. But people are going to give us everything they got. Look at that. We were negative 10,000. Now we're negative... 6,000. No, not the advisors. Um, after that, we're going to need more of this, too. Don't, I'm going to focus on roads. Jabal yeah. Shamad, huh? Um, 1939, of course. Better engineers, maybe? Thousand versus how much? Six thousand. Uh, Iceland has recently exclaimed, or claimed large swaths of the North Atlantic as a right of fishing grounds. It's bound to draw the Isle of the Cynicals and Brembo could perhaps use this occasion to gain support in Ireland or Iceland to eventually use a staging ground for the resistance or reclamation of the home islands. Offer a deal, heck yeah. Resource efficiency gain and whatnot, we need that still. Preparations for war is good. Rally the exiles. There are over a million British exiles currently living in Canada. We must rally them and get every able bodied Brit into the army at once. It's their home we're fighting for, and if they want the children and grandchildren to grow up in the United Kingdom, then they need to act now. God, they just keep throwing more bodies into here. Incredibly annoying. Oh, they're dead. Can I take their navy?
Darn it. You and you. I don't want you anymore. Goodbye. You and you. You do that there. You guys go over here, though. No reds. You're still fighting here, which is kind of insane. You guys are over there. Uh, how's India looking? Oh, that is really not good. Okay, there. Construction speed, yes. We buy more guns and art we need to buy artillery. Uh, you know, we'll buy this first, though. Just one giant thing. God deal trade formed with Iceland. Our merchants have successfully secured a deal with Iceland. This deal will help them get out of their economic slop and gain us Babel Island, North Atlantic. Oh, wow, that's really hard to consume goods factors, isn't it? Um, artillery next. Just support me up. And then I sent all these people. Further develop British, or uh, British, Alberta oil. Take some effort to expand the resources there too. Fuel capacity, huh? Right, what are you doing there? Get back up there, come on. What are you doing here? Nothing, huh? Bend out. Irish flirting with Canadian businesses. We received news today that Irish are doing their best to promote a newly modernized Dublin as a prospective center of trade and finance. Several of our in leading industrial companies have been contacted and it has been suggested that we encourage them to set up shop in the Irish capital. We'll naturally reap some of the profits of this arrangement, which could be quite profitable in the long run. Of course, it would be even more beneficial for the Irish. We're at war. We can't invest right now. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Hey, slowly learning more. I'm kind of considering splitting my guys in half because this is not good at all. Need more guns. We need way more artillery. Trucks, yes. We need rubber. Building more, 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 more. They actually got this place back. They lost this one. That's not good. God dang, they're just killing the guys off. Wait, how much have they lost? 74,000? How much manpower or guns do they have? They're plenty of manpower. They're probably out of guns, though. IEDC. 300. Oh, God. Oh, uh, this to us. And we'll take a uh, civilian factory, probably. Uh, let's go with uh, Greece because they're at war. And we'll also go with. National state. I moderate, not bad. Political decisions. Those guys are getting dead. That's good. After 1939, though, embargo by the United States. Yeah, but our exercise in the Atlantic. With an international situation deteriorating, it's imperative that we demonstrate our strength and exercise our right to a free passage in the Atlantic. To this end, the Admiralty has scheduled an extensive array of fleet maneuvers and war games in the North Atlantic. We can play it safe, but the Admiralty seems to believe that we could also challenge. Uh, rough, Navy rough of roughly equal measure to a bit of a game if they're up for the challenge. Doing so would be risky, but experience for a Navy would be much greater. Conduct large scale exercises off the coast of Britain and Ireland. Conduct large exercises in the North Sea. Conduct normal exercises in Canadian wa territorial waters. Or challenge them. Why not? Within the arms reach. Paralyze the Red Armada. Remain Danish Atlantic possessions. State of the British fleet. Or the north. Munitions. Well, you know, I'm going to come back over here because we've not done this in a while. Mentor conscription. Uh, and he's in the decree. By the order of His Majesty, Her Majesty, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, the exercising of power through syndicalist trade unions, the practicing of any syndicalist or socialist ideology, and the collusion or support of any nation with a socialistic government should be labeled as high treason and criminalized as such. Punishment for our offenders is a $1,000 fine and up to 40 years in prison. Good. As it should be. I want to do all this. Establish the province of Alaska. Oh, we get cores, which would be nice. But I don't want to see these guys die super hard yet. But these guys are still fighting each other, so we still have time. I'd rather take out America first than anything else. England recruitment. 
Uh, once the refinery versus in cores. I like cores. Of course, there's not very much up here. I mean, how, what's the population of Alaska? Honestly, it doesn't even matter this one down here too much. Oil would be nice. Oil, a lot of oil would be nice. But we're okay actually on oil right now. Steel, how much steel do we have? We don't have enough, so. Do oil and steel. Maneuvers lost, oh crap, how embarrassing. We challenged British Navy and it seems we lost. The ran circles around us and made our experienced captains look like fools into our forced retreat. Bruh. Fine, you guys can come down here. We need you down here now. He's gone, doesn't matter. And they're still just killing themselves in our line. I'm mean, a good job, guys, but still. El Salvador offers us a trade deal in exchange of support. An El Salvadorian uh, delegation has arrived at Ottawa today with a trade proposal. They promise to fill our coffee needed in exchange for tools and technical support for the development of their nation, of course. El Salvador, being such a small nation in Central America, doesn't represent a threat to the might of the empire and its allies, and aiding its development will only prove to be beneficial to our interests. What's your response? Of course not. Of course not. Why would we? I wonder if they import anything, because if they do, we'll sink it, but still. Full on fuel. So Drastically reducing what we have here, huh? Let's send these iron here. Guns will be fine. We need to buy more artillery, though. Literally whatever artillery we can get our hands on. And we'll get ready to go to war with one of these guys eventually. But I'm more, more worried about India. My god. Oh, you're level 5 finally. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. Building up roads, that's not good enough. Rubber. And maybe some radar, yes. Okay. Plain stuff. 1940s. This would be good. I are agility. Less range, more agility. More agility. Kind of dare. I'd like to attack here, but we just don't have the forces for it. Where do you get that now? In the ocean, still going all the way around. Good lord. I send a request aid from the Icelandic government has approached us looking for military assistance. The waters off the coast are becoming more and more like a war zone every week as the Coast Guard and Republican Navy clash against each other, fishing ships. Without our protection, the cod deals we have running with them could wither away as the Republican Navy could cut off Iceland. They asked for a detachment of troops to protect the island itself and in several vessels to ward off the Republican forces. How should we respond? Send them what we can. The beaver wakes. Uh, collaborate with the social credits, or sock credits. Social credits is an economic philosophy that was developed by Clifford Hugh Douglas during the Bell Creek and followed by a Canadian branch of the party, colloquially known as the sock creds. The sock creds are loyal followers of the king and queen, and despite not being appointed, the sock creds to the federal power, who still agreed to work to implement these ideas throughout the nation. However, critics have accused social credit of being simplistic and as such would perhaps be wise. To moderate our plans, let's draw anger. Fine, we can give you more soft attack there. Uh, Sending off the Navy. The Navy marks the departure of the newly formed Northwest Atlantic Squadron for the Sonic Waters. My apologies for this. The fleet is comprised of the destroyers HMCS Sterling and Tactician, led by the light cruiser HCMS Dauntless. Command will be issued from the HMCS Cumberland, which will serve as a flagship. Together, one, our proud men set sail to protect our trade from the Gala Syndicalists and the Hope Miles. Good luck and Godspeed. I know, in almost every continent, it seems like, except South America. My god. Well, Gary, you must just hate your men. Map is not an issue for them. It's a stockpile. Cancel military support, what do you mean? You get that already. It's fine. Just literally fill up on whatever we can get. One. Thank you so much. 
44. Anything else around here? Toad anti-air. 43 howitzers. Oh, there we go. I just want one giant shipment. Oh my god. Well, he's learning. That's, that's what we're asking for, you know. They're still struggling here, and they're actually... Uh, they might. They were losing territory over here earlier, but still. <clears throat> State of the British fleet. If Canada is to defend itself, we must reclaim the home islands. It must first of all build the first great navy. Fortunately, the legacy of the once great royal navy uh, provides a perfect foundation, and we're starting from scratch allows us to get the most updated plans or navy possible. Iceland requests scout planes. Governments, Iceland has requested a lease of scout planes to help our squadron better protect the merchant vessels. That's fine. Guardian of the Canal, ruler of two oceans. The Panama Canal is a nail in which hangs the ta rich tapestry of international shipping in the Americas. Seeing as the current custodians have committed to performing king slaying suicide on a national scale, we cannot let anarchy overtake the jewel of engineering in Panama. Canada will accept the status of a new guardian of the canal, and with such a position, transform himself into a new power of two oceans. Lord of the two oceans. So much credit is, uh, well, an economic philosophy that was developed by Clifford Hugh Douglas during the Valkyrie. He believes that the current economic system was designed to create a plutocracy through unnecessary scarcity that the workers needed to be freed from the system by bringing in purchasing power in line with production. Douglas's reform program contains two main elements. A national dividend to distribute monthly money equally to all citizens to bridge the gap between earning power and prices, and a price adjustment mechanism that would forestall the possibility of inflation. Now, that we're in a power, uh, we, we can work to implement these ideas through the, throughout the nation. However, critics have accused social credit of being syndicalist, and as such would be, require, be wise to moderate plans lest they draw anger. Pioneers. Oh, yes, that'd be nice. Fort Attack, River, Mountain, Marsh. Field Hospitals would probably be good. Battalion Modifier, all infantry and motorized mechanized, get HP. More breakthroughs, well, less XP loss. That'd be pretty nice. Compromise and limit the scale of the reforms. Dupus protest against social credit. Give us a national dividend. And you get another civvy. Overall existing economic system. Who needs stability? Maurice Duplass, the premier of Quebec, has announced the government's economic plans, saying that they are contrary to the traditional Quebec values, and announced that it will do its utmost to prevent any implementation of social credit in Canada Day. Canada Day. Dominion Day. Okay, cool. Good for all. Good job, guys. Engineers, good. That'd be nice. We're still trying to get there. Oh my god, go faster. Literally, just go faster. Better rubber producing. Yes, good. Alright, so we're still building a lot of stuff up here, which is okay. Not great. Um, rubber and military factories. We have no fuel again. Pretty typical for us. Do you still have any planes on you? No. Cass is okay. Basic carrier, carrier, carrier. Cass is okay. Small airframes, planes, why not? Yeah, I know we're military factories. We'll go through them. Jungle movement versus amphibious. Move and attack defense. Honestly, this is probably better. Fighting right now, so you might as well do that one. And over here, I'm gonna grab you. Let's grab more. What else can we do? Ofo. Well, the vineyard plan. I think I read this before, so if you remember this, please go right ahead. Um, what else we got here? National Housing Act. Housing is both a basic necessity and a major source of economic activity. By providing incentives for the construction and purchase of homes, we can create demand for key industries and promote expansion of the industrial economy as a whole. Polymer Corporation. 
A polymer corporation, Apollo Corp, is a crown corporation tasked with the development and production of new materials like nylon and synthetic rubber. These new materials will also discover new ways to produce equipment that has, until then, proved a problem for our industry, making them cheaper and faster to produce, and found the CBC. A proposal has been put forward to expand the Canadian Radio Broadcasting Commission into a full-fledged national radio network, called the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Those would help bring together a divided nation and limit the influence of potentially subversive foreign broadcasts, and then explore the North. Before we can mine, we have to find it. While the large forests have long been explored by civilian prospectors, only state-funded geological expeditions will dare venture into the Arctic and subarctic regions to identify the best sites for excavation and extraction. But we're going to end it there, and then when we get the next episode, probably will be at war with, uh, or World War II. The second bucket will kick, kick off as we're trying to help these guys out here. We're slowly starting to get onto this front line here. Um, but we should probably do okay overall in the end, but we'll see. Hey, well, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with Canada, or really, the United Kingdom in Canada. Thanks for watching. Have a great Queen Elizabeth II rest of your day.